<clears throat> okay, I think uh, I think it's time we go ahead. Um, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, welcome to the third episode of the Communicating with Allah series. Today we have Sheikh Riyad. Um, I'm sure many of you know him, uh, esteemed scholar, uh, very well renowned. Um, today's episode will be revolving around prayer. Um, and without further ado, I'll let the Sheikh take it on from here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Just to be sure. Oh, okay, okay. Right. Um, so should I start? It would be in a minute. Um, how far back should I go? Um, up to how far did you hear? Yeah. Just uh, just when you started talking about uh, daily conversations, prayer and daily conversations. J- just when you know. Okay. Right. Now, prayer as we know it, is a is central to the worldview of a Muslim, worship, because we believe Muslims believe it is uh, uh, that worship uh, it is the purpose for which we were created, and we are informed clearly about, uh, of this in the Quran. In uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that wa ma khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa liyabudun that you are not created, you are not created except for worship. And also Allah says, وَمَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُتْعِمُونَ I do not want them, I do not want sustenance from them, and I don't want them to feed. I am, I'm, uh, it is, um, Allah is reminding us that because of the distractions we have, the distractions from prayer, the distractions from worship in our world, it's largely due to our pursuit of, uh, of our sustenance, pursuit of things that we want of the world. So Allah is reminding us here, he's saying that the pursuit of sustenance uh, I'm responsible for that. I, I provide sustenance. He is the one who feeds us, even though it may appear to come from our efforts. Um, our efforts are impoverished. And so we should not prioritize uh, the, the secondary pursuits above our primary purpose, which is to worship. Um, yeah, so it, uh, a, a question that arises here is that um, why why do you have to pray? You know, non-Muslims ask us this question. Why do you have to pray at, at fixed times? Why can't you pray anytime you want? And the answer, of course, is that a Muslim can pray to Allah whenever they wish to do so, but there are also fixed times when Allah wants you to pray. That in the salat kanat al mu'minin kitab muqutta. Believers are under the obligation to say their prayers at an appointed time. But then we're also informed by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That in Allah Azza wa Jal Yabsutu Yadahu Billayli, that Yabsutu Yadahu Billayli Liatuba Musi in Nahar, Wa Yabsutu Yadahu Bin Nahar Liatuba Musi Ulayl, Atta Tatla Shamsum in Maghribiha. That Allah stretches his hands out at night to, to accept the repentance and those who turn to him for those who made mistakes during the day. And the same he does this during the day to accept the repentance and the forgiveness, the offer forgiveness to those who made mistakes during the night. And this will continue. He does this every day and it will continue until the last day. So one can turn to Allah anytime and Allah is always listening. Now, as I said, the formal five daily prayers are the most important and the most significant daily task in the life of a Muslim. And therefore, it is necessary that every effort is made to do it in the best possible manner. In other words, this there's an assumption here that, that our prayer, um, when, when a person says that, look, oh, I'm my, my prayer is, is okay, and this is, this is what usually happens, is that we, because we learned to pray when we were young, and we're continuing to pray, we don't see the need for an improvement of it, as we do with the same urgency with which we see the need for improvement in other aspects of our life. There's assumption, the assumption is that our prayer is not in need of any urgent development, uh, like other aspects. We are, we are agreeable to improvement in, in other spheres of, the li- of our life, uh, keen on home improvement, keen on uh, career improvement, and we're ardent with um, health improvement and making sure our wardrobe is um, uh, uh, up to date, is congruent with the latest fashion to fit in with, uh, with everyone, so with the trend, and not to look out of place. And we're not dissuaded also about on grounds of time. I mean, the fact that it's only been two years since we upgraded our phone is not an obstacle. Um, we're always 
ready to for a further upgrade. We say, oh, my communication devices must be up to date, nothing less than the state of the art. We must be um, up to date. But when it comes to our prayer, it is the routine without improvement for decades. Um, some of us are praying the same prayer for 40 years, some of us for 20 years, by rote, um, without really knowing what we're saying. And, and even when we know the Arabic, when we know what we're saying, our minds are distracted with our worldly pursuits. That, um, so much so that between saying Allahu Akbar and Assalamu Alaikum, there are scores of replay of journeys and replay of activities and conversations that are taking place in the mind with multiple audiences, you know, that, um, and, and then sometimes we're caught off guard, the prayer is finished, and we are still going through things uh, in our minds. Similar to, you know, there is a, 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 a mental illness um, known as uh, multiple personality disorder. Uh, similar to that, um, many of us suffer from what something what I like to call uh, multiple audience disorder. We are, we are ostensibly speaking to one person or one audience, but in the mind or in the heart, we are addressing multiple audiences. And this is a problem not only in prayer, but in wider conversations about Islam. We're often speaking uh, to experiences of awkwardness in other audiences when we talk about is Islam instead of addressing the issues directly. Um, but that's another discussion. When it comes to the communication in prayer specifically, we need to understand why singularity of audience in the heart is of crucial importance and how dangerous it is to have uh, other uh, to have multiple audiences in in the heart um in, in the verse i read to you earlier which was ya ayyuhal ladina amanu la taqrabu as-salaa la taqrabu as-salaa wa antum sukara hatta ta'lamu ma taqulu that do not go near to salah when you are intoxicated when you are under the influence of, of intoxication now the ostensible uh, uh, meaning of this verse is that it, it's, it's speaking about intoxication from wine, but um, uh, but it, it continues. It, it says uh, the reason is until you know what you are saying, then because you will, if a person is intoxicated and goes to pray, then they will not be be conscious of the words they are repeating, what what they are actually saying. Now the, the scholars have also looked at this and reflected on the fact that it's not intoxication are of many types there are many forms you could be intoxicated from food you could be intoxicated from wealth by by wealth intoxicated by your worldly pursuits intoxicated by your by, by your sports your luxuries and and in today's world intoxicated by our phone being uh, captivated our, our minds now to put this into perspective imagine a scenario where you're in the court of a king and addressing him with words of praise and you're saying oh noble king your generosity is recognized and i respect and honor you but at the same time while doing this you're, you're paying all these verbal compliments but your head and face is looking helter skelter all in all directions up and down at his furniture at his door at people are walking past and behind him what do you think the king would make of your words? What would he say of your words? He would see that as disrespectful and not really um, genuine in what you're saying, that you, you've you lost, that there's, no, there's, there, there, there's an absence of consistency between your behavior and what you're actually saying. Now, Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُ That we have created the human being and we know what his heart says to him. And we are closer to him than his juggler vein. In other words, Allah has full view of your heart. He knows the machinations of your heart in intricate detail. He sees and knows what, it, what you're saying, but he also knows when you say Allahu Akbar, that Allah is the greatest, while your heart is stooped in thinking about career prospects or which color of paint i should put on my wall or which item i should add to my shopping list or how how are we going to synchronize how i will synchronize my my wardrobe or my sense of fashion with the latest taste and the latest trend he sees all of that so 
this is the danger of the uh, lack of synchrony between what you're saying and where your heart is. If your heart is all over the place, and as I said, we come to the mosque with the, with the phone to the, to, the, uh, to the ears, to up to the door, and sometimes even in the pockets, uh, it's buzzing. And the mind is flowing. The mind is flowing in all different directions. There are multiple audiences going on. So uh, the warnings are clear in the hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu told, uh, told us that inna rajula la yusalli as salata wa ma lahu minhu illa ushruha. That a person prays a salah and he will not get the reward of even a tenth of it, only a tenth of it. Tus'uha, thumunuha, sub'uha, sulusuha, khumusuha, rub'uha, thulusuha, wa nisfuha. Sometimes an eighth of it, sometimes a ninth, a tenth, and he goes right down to, sometimes he gets half of it. And this is so because لَيْسَ لِلْمَرْئِ مِنْ صَلَاتِهِ إِلَّا مَا أَقَلَ مِنْهَا That the portion, only the portion of the salah, you, you will be rewarded for that portion of the salah, that portion of the salah, that you were conscious, that you were conscious of who you were speaking to, what you were doing. That the communication is not only, it's not limited to the sound that, that, that you're making with your mouth. It is, it has to be, it has to come from the heart. The heart has to be focused. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained, explained this. He says, man sallah as salata. And this is, this is how dangerous it is. Um, he, he, he explained, what is the criterion for this communication, how it works. And he says, Man salla salawat, uh, as salawat li waqtiha wa asbaga laha al uh, wudu'aha. That the one who prays, who is careful about the time of the prayer, he's not negligent about the time. He's, and then asbaga laha wudu'aha. He starts with paying attention to the wudu, doing it properly before you go to prayer. That is your downtime from the world. It's washing your sins, getting yourself ready, not only physically, but mentally. So, uh, And he completes the standing before Allah. He's standing in front of Allah. He completes that. Uh, he, he does it properly. And the, the internal makeup, the focus of the heart is, is perfect. There's a communication from the salah itself to the person. That, that communication is that the prayer itself, when it leaves on completion, if, you, if the heart is in the right place, the preparation is in the right place, and the performance, the physical performance of the prayer is complete, then that, that communicates something. And that communication is that the, the prayer itself will start, would speak on your behalf. It would pray for you. It says, the, the prayer itself says, Hafizakullah kama hafadtani. And pray, may Allah preserve you and protect you as you have protected me. As for the opposite, as for the reverse of that, man sallaha li ghayri waqtiha. The one who prays salah and doesn't pay attention to the time, he, he, he leaves it until it's the, um, the last minute and then uh, forgets. Wala waqtiha wa lam yusbiqil wudu. And then he doesn't spend time in wudu. Wudu is done just as a splashing. There's no contemplation of what wudu is about, about washing of sins and, uh, and downtime so that you can prepare yourself mentally. Nothing of that. And he does not complete the khushu of it, and the, the, the other aspects of the salah are not complete. The salah then leaves muslima. It is no longer baydha'a musfira. It is not shining white brilliance. It doesn't go up brilliant and shining. It becomes dark, darkened. Um, and wretched, and it says, Allah kama dayyatani. May Allah waste you as you have wasted me. Hatta idha kanat haythusha Allah, and then until it reaches to a point in the sky, uh, 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 and then it is luffat kama yulaffu thawbu al khadiq, and then it is folded up, it is crumpled up, thumma dariba biha wajhu, and then it is thrown back into his face, into her face, his or her face. If, you, if we corrupt our salah, if we do not do, pray it properly, this is, this is the potential danger in it. Now, the irony of our plight today is that while communication has become the most salient feature of our civilization, our individual abilities, uh, abilities to communicate, um, our individual abilities to communicate without distraction is diminishing at an alarming rate. People are finding it hard to even communicate with a book, um, to even read a book. 
there's a prob- there, there are problems. We are constantly in need to check in on our phone, which is becoming an extension of ourselves. Now, this has profound consequences for our ability to communicate in general, but when it comes to prayers, as I said, which is the most important task in your life, it has the potential to become a, to become a tragedy, and a, a tragedy of a global, uh, uh, of a global nature, um, because uh, this was, there, there is a global tragedy that is linked to this, that was prophesized by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as the first great tragedy, the first great deprival for this ummah would be in this particular in this particular case. The first thing that will be lost, the first knowledge, the first the first gift that we will lose, what well, is this? This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us. He said, "أول شيء يرفع من هذه الأمة الخشوع." that the first thing that will be lifted up from this ummah, the first thing that will be lifted would be khushur, praying with the focused heart. Hatta la tara fiha khashia, until you will not see one person who has khushur. So there'll be lots of people praying, but there wouldn't be anything. And Ubad ibn Sabat radiallahu anhu explained, he said, in shita law haddithanaka bi awwali ilmin yurfa'u min al-nas. Let me tell you about the first knowledge that will be lifted is khushur. So khushu is the knowledge, is the most precious knowledge that we have for the most, for the most important task of our, uh, of our life, which is the primary purpose of our life, which is to worship. And that knowledge is in danger of being lifted up. That a, t- that a time will come when you will enter a masjid, a large mosque, and you will see many people praying, but you wouldn't, not one person will have khushu because it would have been lifted up. May Allah protect us from that. From the, and that would be global. That, that will happen. That's, that's a prediction of Rasulullah And khushu is criterion for success for a believer. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ That the people who have khashi'u, who have khushu, who have hearts that are well focused in their prayer, those are the ones who will be successful. So, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ The salah is supposed to be a source of guidance for the rest of your life. The salah, the salah prevents, prevents one from, immora- it prohibits one from immorality and wrongdoing. That is it. So, salah is supposed to have an influence on the rest of your life. That Because when a person stands in front of salah, the hearts are re- revived with the presence of Allah and that then facilitates that presence in other aspects of your life in your work in your with your family with, with your pursuits your your worldly endeavors you will be conscious of Allah and that, and that pro- pro- that prevents you that prohibits you from going into wrongdoing but sadly what has happened today the opposite is happening our worldly life is being brought into the prayer Mentally, first of all, and it's several times, sometimes physical, but mentally we are all over the place. We bring bits of, 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 the, of our worldly life. We, we, have, we, we say Allahu Akbar and we, our mind is drifting left, right and center um, with all, all the things that we are worried about, uh, about during the day, who we have spoken to, what we should say to a certain person, what, where we should go, what I should do when I leave the mosque, where should I go, what should I do after this prayer. And... The entire salah is filled with dunya instead of the salah, the, our life outside of salah being influenced by the salah. And sometimes even physically, as I said, the, the phone is buzzing silently with notifications throughout the prayer. The phone, uh, uh, the, and this itself is a distraction. So what we need in order to regain the function of salah as a boost for our hearts uh, is to cherish the favor of it before it is being, before, the favor of Allah, this favor of khushu, this favor of having hearts that are, that are included in the communication, um, before it's taken away, and to seek the higher synchrony. Yes, seek the higher synchrony. You know, we, we go around seeking synchrony with the trends, that, oh, if I go out with, with this clothes that I bought uh, four years ago or two years ago, it would not synchronize with the fashions of today or the trends of today. I need to get a new watch. It's old because it's not, it's not synchronized with the um, fashions and the trends of today. Think about the higher synchrony. There is a higher synchrony that we have to prioritize as Muslims. And that higher synchrony is 
what Allah told us in the Quran. He says, تُسَبِّحُ لَهُ السَّمَاوَاتُ السَّبْعُ وَمَنْ فِيهِنْ That whatever is in the seven heavens and on the earth, and earth they all exalt Allah. They sing Allah's praises. وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ And everything sings the praises of, says the praises, exalts the praise of Allah. But you, you do not understand. You cannot perceive it. وَلِلَّهِ يَسْجِدُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ That whatever is in the heavens and the earth prostrate to Allah. It, it, it prostrate to Allah willingly or unwillingly. They have to prostrate. And their shadows, even their shadows prostrate. بِالْغُدُوِ Morning and evening. Now, that is happening. So every atom in the galaxies are in tasbih, are in dhikr of Allah. These... This is a synchrony. When you, so when you are synchronized, when, you, when your heart is focused on Allah, then you are synchronized with that higher synchrony. Synchrony of the creation of everything. So the heavens and the earth all belongs to Allah, but they all say the praises of Allah. So seek that higher synchrony. So, and we also we need to regain the function of salah as a cleansing. As Rasulullah wasallam said, um, لو أرأيت لو أن لو أن نهرا بباب أحدكم يغتسل منه كل يوم خمس مرات. That if a person has a river in front of his house and he's being he 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 he's, he's taking a bath, he's given a bath five times a day. هل هل would there be any dirt left on his body? He asked the Sahaba this question, and they said no, that they will not. And he said ذلك. He said ذلك الصلوات الخمس. So this is like the salat of the five daily prayers. That if you it, 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 that the salah will, will be a cleansing. It, 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 and what does it clean you for? It cleans you from khataya. Khataya I mean, in both your sins and mistakes. And it is also, it is also a, a way of erasing the deluge from our worldly activities that, 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 that cloud our minds and stay in our minds because Rasulullah said, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ قَلْبَكَ وِعَا That know that your heart is a receptacle. فَانْظُرْ مَا تَحْشُوا بِهِ وِعَاكَ so be careful with what you fill your wi'a, fill your, your, your vessel with. So the need, the, this is what, what all the deluge that we accumulate during the day. We need to train our hearts to settle on the focus of Allah instead of what's happening now. It's automatically the, the default settling of the heart is on our social media communications and all the other things. We're, we're, we're having this um, psychological urge to open and check our phones even if there's no, no the, 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 there are no notifications on it because the, it, it's, it's become a psychological need. What we need now is a downtime in order to be able to refocus the communication in Salah. That we're speaking to Allah like that person who is standing in front of the king and imagine how this would appear to someone who can see your heart. Allah is seeing your heart. We need that downtime but to prepare before the Salah. We need to practice and focus, of, uh, focus our heart on the one who is most deserving of the attention of our heart in communication. Because this is it. Innaka lam tusalli. Rasulullah said to that Sahabi, you know, who prayed quickly. And um, he came, he did salam in, in the mosque. And Rasulullah said, wa alaykum salam, irja fa salli, fa innaka lam tusalli. That um, return and pray again because you haven't prayed. And he did this three times. And then that Sahaba said, <laughs> that, that, I swear by the one who has sent you with the truth, uh, I, I can't do any better than this. And then Rasulullah said, so teach me. And then Rasulullah said, yes, okay, let me teach you. And what's interesting, what's important here to note is that Rasulullah didn't go and say, okay, stand up with him and say, okay, you pray like this. Where did he start? He started with wudu. He started with the place with wudu. He said, man, asbag al wudu. That he started showing that, look, you have to do wudu properly so that, because wudu is a preparation of the mind to, for that downtime, for cleansing, that we don't rush. We are not rushing into prayer. We, are, we, are, we had time to prepare. We had time for, to clear the mind and then come. And five times in that hadith, Rasulullah used the word, hatta um, tatma'in, until you've attained calm. Until you have attained tranquility. The tasjud, you, you're going to search down until you have received calm. So calm, that calm is the focus. So if we are 
setting. Now, in this Ramadan, fasting is, uh, is prescribed for us. We, and it is an opportunity to train our hearts to communicate with Allah. Because taqwa, in essence, is the focus of the heart. Rasulullah said, a taqwa ha huna, a taqwa is in the heart. And, you know, uh, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu asked Ubay radiallahu anhu, he said, what is taqwa? And he, his response was, he said, Ya Amir al Mu'ama, sarakta tariqan fihi shawk, Ya Amir al Mu'minin. Have you not traversed a play, a, a, a terrain in which there are lots of thorns? And he said, what did you do? And Umar radiallahu anhu said that, look, I, Ushammir wa ansaqai, wa uqaddimu qadaman, wa wakhir qadaman, wa anduru, ayna adha'af. He said that I, I pull my clothes close to me and then I, I take my steps very carefully. I look where I'm going. And that is exactly what it is. It's about focus. It, taqwa is about focus on the goal. And the focus is to Allah, to, on the one who, is, who deserves your attention, focusing on Allah, not having these hooks that, like the thorns, all of these other uh, occupations that we're in, indulged in, that, that, to pull our attention away, to pull. Because when, it, when, you, when you're being pulled, and you're, when you're, you're being pulled not only from the eye, or, and you're, you're being pulled in the heart, and Allah can see the varying from left to right of you. So if you're setting resolutions, you should know resolutions for this Ramadan to develop your deen. Then before aiming to become, you know, muhaddisin and mufassirin and, and all the other knowledges, that, which is nothing wrong in doing that, but we must, be, we must aim to become good abideen, because good, 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 good people who are good worshippers first, uh, because that is for, for foremost that will be questioned on the Day of Judgment. The first thing that will be questioned on the Day of Judgment will be about your prayer. If you, if you succeed in that, then everything else will be fine. And if you fail in that, then, la samahallah, then there's a problem. You know, um, the Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said, uh, was asked about uh, um, taqwa, and he said that uh, taqwa is four things. He said, al-khawfu min al-jaleel, wal amalu bit tanzil, that is the fear, it's the fear of Allah, being conscious of Allah, being fearful of Allah. Well, I'm a little bit tanzil, and your actions are inconsistent with, with, the, with what is revealed, with the revelation. And this is important because it's the rida bil qalil. We want more and more of the dunya, and that is the thing that distracts, distracts us and cause our hearts to, to shift, shift away from the need to be focused on Allah. Um, so al-rida al-amal al-khawf min al-jalil wal-amal bil-tanzil wal-rida bil-qalil and then finally al-istidadu liyom al-rahil and preparing for your day of departure of leaving and as I said in the beginning we should all have this as we should think about the fact that we have to go that we have to prepare for a day of, of uh, uh, our, our departure the the departure uh, date is set is set. The cabin is set where you will be buried. That's all written for you. Even your cabin crew, the, one, the ones who will come and question you in your grave, they're also prepared. They're also set and ready. So if you're setting resolutions to use Ramadan to develop your deen, then make this a priority. The ones, your worship who, who follow, make, the, make your resolution to become like the Abideen, the, 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 the pious people who were known for their worship and whose prayer was mi'raj, it was ascension for them into the ranks, um, getting closer to Allah. So in summary, what I would say is that, look, if the key to human-to-human -human communication is in maintaining eye contact, then know that the key to maintaining communication with Allah is in maintaining contact in the heart. And you will do so, you can do so by maintaining synchrony. And if you do this, if you maintain this synchrony, if you maintain this, then you will be in synchrony with the entire universe, with all of Allah's creation, except the ones that are rebellious, which are far few and far between, and shaitan, of course. So ask Allah, Rasulullah has advised us that he says, wa antum muqinuna bil ijabati ask ask of allah speak to allah beg of allah supplicate to allah in such a way that you are in full conviction and you are in full certainty that allah is listening and he will respond wa'lamu and and then there's a warning that follows he says wa'lamu 
ان الله لا يستجيب دعاء من قلب غافل لاهن then know that allah does not accept a prayer or a dua or, or or a supplication from a heart that is distracted a heart that is diverted allah does not do that allah does not accept it so it is about learning to communicate with allah from the heart that's the message of tonight of tonight's discussion that we, we we have to make we have to make that effort and not assume that oh because i know to pray then that's fine i don't i don't i i have no need to worry work on my salah your salah has to be a primary objective of development in your life if you're developing all the other aspects of your life your career your house your your family your, uh, your, your bank account and all the others then this has to take priority all of those are subordinate to the development of your salah may allah purify our hearts from the deluge of this worldly life and grant us hearts that are steadfast in hope in his mercy and in hope for the favor the favor of forgiveness and the favor of his eternal pleasure when we return to him may allah give us this both in this world and the next allahumma inna na'udhu bika min qalbin la yakhsha allahumma inna na'udhu bika min qalbin la yakhsha allahumma inna na'udhu bika min qalbin la yakhsha wa min du'a'in la yusma' wa min du'a'in la yusma' wa min du'a'in la yusma' ومن نفس ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن علم لا ينفع اللهم انا نعوذ بك من هؤلاء الاربعه this is the dua of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to say he used to say oh allah i seek refuge in you from a heart that is distracted and not humbled i seek refuge from you in a heart that is distracted and not humbled and from a heart and from knowledge that is of no benefit and from supplication that is not accepted or rejected and i seek refuge in you from a soul that is never satisfied may allah grant us all these four ya muqallib allahumma ya muqallib alqulub thabbit qulubana ala ta'atik ya muqallib alqulub thabbit qulubana ala dinik allahumma inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik اللهم وفرج هم المهمومين وارفع عنا البلاء سالمين واحفظنا من من الوباء امنين ونفس كرب المكروبين واقض الدين عن المدينين واشف جميع مرضى المسلمين يا رب يا كريم ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وان لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد امين 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 يا رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته Assalamu alaikum Shaykh. Um, just, to, just to round things up, um, apologies for the technical difficulties at the start. But, um, once again, I think I can speak for everyone when I say that that was very moving and very emotional and it was a reminder that we all needed uh, desperately. Uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, we will see you tomorrow, inshallah. Tomorrow? Oh, no, not tomorrow, my bad time. For the next episode, which is right, the 28th. Sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I thought I'd missed it. Yeah, they give me a shock. No, it's okay. Inshallah. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah bless you all. Ramadan Mubarak. Kulli a'ma antum bi khair. May Allah bless your Ramadan and make you all successful, both in this world and the next, in your studies and also in your pursuit of making the best of this Ramadan. May Allah accept it. And use your time wisely. Um, there are lots of um, schemes that shaitan has put into place also to use your time and make, make this time, make Ramadan a time for Quran, you reading Taraweeh at home. Yes, we, we usually pray in, in the mosque and, the, the, the imam, and depend on the imam to lead the salah. Now Allah has put, put the, the burden on us and this, in this there is a blessing. And the blessing is that we can learn to read Quran, learn, memorize Quran and practice Taraweeh at home, inshallah. And, and remember us in your du'as. Jazakumullahu khairah wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.